Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to another episode of Technique Tuesday. The last couple of weeks we've been working on different color schemes. So I, I want to say the first the first day we did um, the opposite one. What is that called? Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, the words are totally not coming to me today. I probably should have written them down because sometimes they just escape me. But either way, it was the opposite. So we did cherries and we did red and green. And then um, last week we did analogous, where we kind of stuck in the red, red, orange, yellow zone. And this week we're going to go with monochromatic. So it's really going to be all the ranges of the reds. Now, my, my color wheel here doesn't really show all the blacks or the, or the you know, what, what happens when you add black when you shade it or tone it. Um, but basically the way to, to, to vary a red is going to be to add like gray black or white. So I'm going to begin with adding some gray because it's kind of a, it's kind of somewhere in between. So I'm going to grab some gray and that's just a basic slate gray from Deco Art Americana. I could totally hand mix this, but black tends to be a pretty, it can be a bit of a fussy color. And so I'm going to kind of go, it was, it's okay. So we're working with a very cool tone red. So that has almost a purpley feel, which probably means that well, it looks like a warm tone. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to add some white to that just to lighten it up a bit. And that creates kind of a, a muddy, funky, near purple color. And we're going to just use that in the background. So kind of pull, pull the line across here. I think I want a large, slightly larger flat brush to just make this go faster, right? So our, our, our main color here, or the sort of the, the the, the monochrome that we're working with is, is red. Hey, Holly, how's it going? I'm glad you, I'm glad you caught me today. You set all your alarms. So you knew I was going to be here. So I'm adding some more white to that. Oh, shoot. Here I was all going to catch the, uh, this, this time lapse. And I guess I spaced out. Okay. Anyway, that's fine. So I had a darker tone and now I added some white to that very same color. Just going to kind of spread it across here for the background. So we're creating a horizon line and I could even blend it a little bit if we wanted. Now this is, this is, again, this is a cool tone red and you can tell because this looks so kind of mauve for lack of a better term. Whereas if this was a warmer tone red, this would have a, almost a peachy, a peachy feel to it. So the red I'm using today is Tuscan Red from Deco Art Americana. Again, that's a very deep, sort of bluey toned red. Hey, Jeannie. Hey, Cassie. How's it going, guys? Or excuse me, gals. I should say gals. Okay, so I'm going to just offload some of that. And now I'm just going to plop in the cherries very basically. First by just grabbing some of that straight red. And, you know, we're freehanding this here. So we'll do a just kind of a mushy circle here. And it's okay to do this right on top of white or light. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today. It's okay to do this on top of wet paint because it's just gonna pick up some of the light and you're just gonna get a little bit of blending. And then kind of create another sort of partial, partial circle there. You notice I allow just a small gap between the two. It's gonna just make it easier so stuff isn't gonna be so mushed together. Jeannie's watching from Pennsylvania. I think my kids are in the car on the way to Pennsylvania with their dad as we speak. I'm going a different direction this year for, for Thanksgiving. I'm so excited. It's like one more day, one more day, one more day. Anybody else got good plans that you're getting excited about? I'm sorry, Holly. That's probably not the right question to ask. <laughs> you had good plans. All right. So we have a basic red in here. Now we're going to begin to add some, 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 some shading as well as some highlights to this. And again, we're sticking with a basic color palette. And so one of my goals here is to really show you how varied you can get, even when you're basically using one color and then the darks and the lights to, to shift it a little bit. Okay. So since I'm not a big fan of straight black, unless I absolutely need it, I'm going to put a little bit over here and kind of offload the extra, grab a blop of red. I'm going to mix myself a deep, well, that still looks like black, doesn't it? So we'll take that mixed bit and then add another big hunk. 
So black is one of those crazy colors that it takes just the tiniest amount to really drastically shift a color. So now I have like what feels like a deep, a deep burgundy. It's almost got a plummy feel to it. But that, that makes sense because, you know, in terms of the color schemes, this is really kind of almost a purpley red. I mean, it's red, red. Um, sort of even crazier with like an alizarin and crimson. And again, this is not about, you know, drawing picture perfect, amazing cherries today because I'm just going from memory kind of like, you know, well, yeah, going from memory. So we know that there's kind of a divot there. And I love the cherries because we're using the same theme every single week so that you can slowly but surely kind of look at the contrast and be like, oh, wow, look at how different those look. And then you, if you do all the exercises, you'll have some side by side, um, really the same topic to see how differently they can be executed. So I'm adding, I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just adding a whole bunch more red. That's taking a lot of red pigment to shift it even just a little bit from that darker color. I'm going to fill in a little bit just right above that dark line that I had. A little bit around the edges here, here. Now here's where I really like my soul is screaming to put a little green in to make the, um, the, uh, the stems, but we're going to stick with like a black uh, or a purpley tone black, something like that. Okay. So we've got that in. I'm going to offload the paint since we're working more or less monochrome. I don't really have to rinse. Um, I just want to get the, the majority of the, the pigment off. So grabbing some red, I'm going to pull it out here and then grab a little bit of this mix that we already had. I'm kind of just picking the little white bits off the edges. So we're creating a lighter red. This is kind of looking pinky. And that's actually quite close to magenta. So we'll kind of put some of that in here on the body. Just to kind of, you know, we're just, we're using a bunch of red to kind of make it interesting. Offload. I think I want to come back in with some just pure red, kind of right in, lopping it on. Now I'm putting this, this paint on very, very thick. The one issue with that is that if I now want to come in and do highlights, it is going to be a little bit difficult. This almost looks like a paint by numbers because we really kind of have little blocks. We have the, the darkest swoosh, the slightly lighter swoosh, um, the lightened. So these are the sh different shades of red. These are the different um, tones of red because that's when you add white. Um, and this is the pure red. All right. And then we'll add some, I think some straight up white. I'm going to give it a second. So while I'm here, um, I think I can use this near black that's got a little bit of red mixed in. I could go a straight black, but that's going to be very, very harsh. So the slight softening with a little bit of red is going to do me a favor. So I'm going to start that line, just kind of come right in the middle of that dark spot on top. Just gently pull a slim line up. I'm using kind of a, it's a medium on the small side, medium round brush. It's like maybe a little bit smaller size bristle, et cetera, than you would get in a kid's watercolor set. Um, but not, but not like a fine liner of any sorts. And something I probably should mention, I just, I just said something about watercolor sets. I think most of you know this, but I'm gonna bring it up again. Um, brushes for watercolor are very soft and they tend to be sable. Whereas for acrylic, you need a stiffer brush, a, a stiffer bristle. So if you have watercolor brushes, unless you're trying to do watercolor with acrylics, which has been known to happen, you're going to want to, um, you're going to want to change up your brushes and make sure they're stiff. So I'm gr putting a smidge of the red into that darker tone there that we use for the stem. And again, it's not a pure black. And I'm just going to create the very smallest kind of shadow right at the base, right at the base. Now I probably could add a little shading in here too, which I will. Now grabbing this lighter tone that we've mixed, which is actually the gray and the red, got a little more gray, a bit more red. Hello. There we go. 
touch of the blackish to it. So I'm trying to create a color that's darker than this, but is not going to be exactly um, the same as the cherry. So I'm adding, I'm graying it out, right? I'm adding whites and blacks to sort of dilute to lower the contrast of that red. All right, we'll just kind of come in here and just kind of almost scrubbing the paint in. And for those of you who are curious, I'm just doing this on a simple wood panel, same as last time. I think I bought like a whole bunch of these ages ago when I was just looking for options for small canvases to mess around with. So that's added a little bit of shadow to it. I can intensify that shadow a bit by adding a bit more black into that same color I just mixed. Oh, that is such a muddy color. Oh. So that's how you monochrome is probably my least favorite favorite color scheme, but I think it's really fun to play with anyways to see how many interesting and different kind of colors you can still come up with despite, well, despite your lack of uh, options or lack of, you know, materials, I guess I should say. Okay, so I'm kind of scrubbing really more heavy, heavier on the black here. Um, it's, yeah. And so we've created a little bit more shadow down in there. This is still very wet, so it's kind of creating some funny, let's see if I can get that angle there. So I don't have my highlights in yet, and I need to shade in there. Offloading a whole bunch of that. Come in and I think I can grab a little bit of this deep, deep red, get a little bit more of the black. And again, the beauty of this is you can kind of, just kind of mess with what you got. And just add a little bit of that darkness back in here next to this guy. Kind of fill in that gap. Yeah, we definitely need a highlight, huh? I'm gonna give it a quick blast just so this wet stuff doesn't just lift every time I come in with some light. And so you'll notice that we're kind of using, you know, red is the, is the is obviously red is the color that we're trying to emphasize here. And so that's why we use the red for the cherries and we allow it to get much lighter or washed out saturated all those things okay so we'll come in with some I'm thinking pure white well actually you know let's mess around let's try a tiny bit of the very palest pink I'm gonna put a little bit of that in here and a little bit around the tops there. And so like a cherry generally has what I like to think of as kind of a hip because it's sort of the rounded part and then that hole in the center. And so we're just adding some highlights. Wow, I hit a big wet gooky chunk. That's sort of the hip. Okay, I guess I'm kind of blending a little now. Well, that's fine. So we'll blend a little in. And that actually helps because it was it's a little harsh for me. So I think grabbing some of that, that wet paint and allowing it to blend a little is not the worst thing in the world. And so what that also does is this is a little bit of a less intense highlight and it's a little bit brighter over here because again, the sun, the light is coming kind of from this way and the shadow is being cast this way. So I have the majority of the highlights right here. Your brain's gonna be like something ain't right. So. Tone those guys a little lighter. And a touch of the pure white. Here. Here. We'll kind of kiss right along the top of the. And I'm just using like the pure white kind of kissing just barely with just the stray bristle right along that chair. If I wanted to add more nuance to it, I totally could. Um, 
going to mix a lighter red. We're going to have just a little reflection that kind of pops underneath these guys too. So even though we're used to a majority of the reflection kind of coming from the top, if you've got the light coming down, it's going to be bouncing off the, the surface underneath. And so we're just going to do, but I want it, I don't want it to be like a pure stark white. So I'm really just taking like those light, light pinks and there we go. Just kind of little, little highlights here and there to just kind of remind you that those, that those edges are there. I've kind of lost my horizon line a bit, so I can just grab some of what I had mixed up over here. Maybe sketch it in just a smidge. It's not exactly this. It's not quite the right color, but I kind of don't even care. Meh. <laughs> okay. I'm just playing now. But that's pretty much it. I don't know if you guys have any questions, but we have really used a totally monochromatic palette. All of these colors have been mixed from red, light black, um, slate gray, which is a warm tone gray, oddly enough, and titanium white. I'll just bring that up a little bit so you can kind of see. It's pretty crazy how quickly that comes together and how much you can do without a ton of color. You know what I see that I want to add? I want to bring that, some of the highlighting on the stem down, right? Kind of there. So it goes right into the, into the inside of the thing. All right. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. Holly asks, um, Sable. So sable is for, for watercolor only, and it tends to be very, very soft and squashy. Um, a majority of the um, brushes for acrylics are going to be Royal Taquan or Taquan. Um, so they tend to be synthetic. You can go with with real with real bristles, um, but honestly, the the Taquan is fantastic. Um, and it comes in a number of colors. You can get it in black Taquan. You can get it in sort of the brown, gold. I don't know. Do I have any white? Oh, it's well, it's super stained. This one was white. Um, and it's falling apart. I need to glue it. But yeah, so Taquan comes in a number of a number of colors. So in general, um, a majority of the brushes that. Ooh, a majority of the um, the brushes that you're already using are probably exactly the ones that you want. Um, yeah, and the reason that like watercolor brushes they're softer is because oftentimes you're you're kind of moving and pushing the pigment around inside of water, um, and it tends to because it's you can't do multiple layers. Well, you can, but you can't do multiple layers with watercolor the same way that you do with um, with acrylic. Because acrylic, you can just wait for it to dry. But watercolor is by nature very see-through, and so you always see see what's underneath. So I don't have a whole lot of um, watercolor brushes. It's kind of not really not really my jam. Um, another kind of brush that we often use and used to use are the chip brushes. These are super fun. These are great for like big, fast coverage, and these are actual nat natural natural bristle. It might even be boar. It's very soft. It's kind of maybe the same thing that you'd get one of those scrubby brushes, you know, that you like use in the shower on yourself that feel really nice. Um, they do tend to shed though. So I wouldn't use this obviously on this. And I don't much like the really tiny brushes that come with these kind of bristles. Uh, they're very, very stiff. And um, I feel like they don't, they don't quite flex the way I want them to for, um, for acrylics. So I hope that, I hope that answers some questions. And um, I wanted to have the other two of these, but I think they fell off my desk. The cats got into a bit of trouble last night. I heard crashing and banging. So I'm assuming that I'm going to have to go like dive down the back of my desk and go find the other two so you guys can really see the difference between the analogous color scheme, the, the opposite one. What's it called? What's it called? And the monochrome. What is it called? Oh my gosh. My brain is like, no, nope, you don't get to have that word today. Complimentary complimentary.
And the complementary was when we did the green and the red, or the green and the, the red. Analogous was here, monochrome was here. And so monochrome could be accomplished in any number of these, whether you said, I'm just going to do monochrome orange, I'm going to do monochrome yellow, I'm going to do monochrome, you know, yellow green. So you wouldn't be adding more yellow or more green to this. You would just be changing it with black or white or some combination of both. All right. Well, it's been great. I will see you guys next time. Quick reminder, we often do our lives on Thursdays, but it's Thanksgiving here in the States. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. I love you. I obviously will be stuffing myself with turkey and making sure that my stretchy pants still uh, know how to do their jobs. Hopefully you will too. And then um, we'll see you back next week for my inner circle folks. Next week is creative week because it's kind of the fifth week of the month. Uh, we've already done, I think, four pretty big projects. So I may not be releasing anything on Monday, but I do have some fun bonuses coming for you guys in the coming weeks. So again, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful holiday and we'll see you when we all get back. Bye guys.